Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. Um, so, I'm pretty excited about uh, doing this episode here. First of all, I'm going to do a whole bunch of episodes tonight, and uh, we're definitely going to be um, uh, powering through some wine today. Um, I'm continuing with the whole dual camera setup, so I've got the Osmo Pocket, right? Yeah, the Osmo Pocket right there. It's kind of bright lights. I got the Vixie over here. Uh, just so you can kind of see how things look without any type of color correction other than just what the cameras are set up at. Uh, so exposure and white balance were set already. And um, I just have, and the color correction should be fine, but I'll probably adjust it a little bit. This is how things look. And then I also have it unzoomed on the pocket. The Vixia, it's normal. Actually, I don't even think I have to zoom it in, though I might have to, uh, the 105% like I normally do. And then... Uh, and then that's it. Now, uh, from this point on, I'll end up uh, directly pretty much at the Osmo, at the pocket, and you'll see that I had to zoom in because the green screen, <laughs> uh, the green screen won't work if, uh, if I have the totally wide angle field. So um, everything's working right, yeah. And uh, I figured out why I wasn't, uh, why, why the pocket, when I was re recording earlier today, I was recording my uh, iPhone thing, um, which, if you watch on the website or you are a podcast subscriber, um, I did something today about the iPhone 11 on YouTube because uh, it really wasn't an episode. I just want to give my thoughts about what I'm going to do with that. So if you haven't watched that, go and check it out and then you can answer the question for me. So um, anyway, but the uh, I have it plugged in, the pocket I have it plugged into the um, a uh, power bank and for some reason it wasn't charging. It should be charging now. Anyway, uh, it looks like it is. Well, it says 100%, so I'll check it. I'll check the battery a little bit later. So uh, let's get to the wine. <laughs> so I'm really excited about doing this wine here. Uh, you might recognize the name. Hopefully you do, uh, because the person who's behind this wine has definitely been promoting it a lot this year. And uh, we've, we've, he's one of the people that got me into this whole thing of doing video wine podcasting. So back in uh, 2010, well, the episode came out January 4th, 2010, which means that I actually did the, re I recorded the review like the end of 2009. Uh, I, re I uh, reviewed the 2007 Vaniac Cabernet Sauvignon from Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, Vaynerchuk. And uh, it was around the, that was around the end of me being able to buy wine from Wine Library and have it shipped to Texas because of some archaic laws that actually were, as far as I know, effectively struck down by the Supreme Court earlier this year um, in a uh, court case with, uh, that had to do with the uh, um, uh, state of Tennessee that uh, basically was very restrictive in how it was handling out-of-state retailers and shipping. Um, so that, plus enough, some other case law from the Supreme Court, um, has supposedly made it legal again um, to do this, but of course no one's really doing it yet until they have like absolute concrete that they can do this. Uh, and I won't go through the legalities of all that, but basically um, with all these legal, all these, these cases that have happened, and there's other cases that have been uh, uh, filed in, in states like Texas, um, these will all probably end up being in favor of out-of-state out retailers uh, being able to ship like to Texas, like Wine Library. So I might be able to start ordering from Wine Library again. But I got plenty of wine here in the state, trust me. Uh, plus, I, my two main places I buy wine from, I, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of happy with that. But what is this wine? So this wine is Gary's new venture called Empathy. 
Uh, and this is the first wine. It is a white blend. Uh, so they have a white blend. They'll have a rosé and then a cab later next year. Um, so uh, I've been kind of bugging the empathy people on social media. And I even went to Gary when he was in Austin a couple months ago. I was like, hey, man, send me your wine. Uh, and he was like, yeah, dude. But it didn't happen, right? So I've been kind of bugging him to... Um, I wonder why I did that. Uh to, uh, uh, I'm just going to quit out of that real quick because I want to make sure that I don't lose the who's he, what's it? There we go. Never. All right. Anyway, boom. It was still connected. Come on, connect again. Boom. All right. So, uh, anyway, so I, I kind of started chatting up with the empathy people and um, they reached out to me uh, about, about getting the wine and I was kind of hoping it was going to be, yeah, dude, uh, um, you know, we'll send you some wine. Uh, and, uh, it was more, it was more like, oh, we can't send you the wine. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you got to buy it. So I did. Uh, so it's a subscription model. And, uh, so let's see here, Andrew, do I have his last name on the email somewhere? It's got to be. The original email's got to have his last name. Wow. I don't have his last name in any of the emails. So anyway, Andrew from Gary V's team. How about, how about I look to see if it's Goldberg. That's right. Andrew Goldberg. Oh, yeah. That was kind of funny. Um, <clears throat> so he reached out to me. And I was like, dude, I would love to review the wine. Hey, can you send me a sample? Oh, I can't do that. But they gave me a discount. So I got a 10% discount on the wine. And um, so you can buy these wines in a subscription model. So it's, uh, let me get my, let me pull that up. You can buy in uh, either three bottles, six bottles, or 12 bottles per shipment. And you're getting the same wine. Like, so I got three of these, not not one of each of the three wines, not the, the white, rosé, and red, because they're not even out yet. The rosé, I think, is almost out. Um, so we did this. So I got three of these bottles. So then, in, in, I don't know, really soon I'll get three of the rosé. And then next year, when they put out the cab, I'll get three more. So and I'll do reviews of each of those. Um, but So it came out to that it's $81 for the three bottles. And that works out to like 25, seven, whatever, including shipping, by the way, um, per bottle. So not cheap, but not like expensive. I'm not talking about $50 a bottle of wine. Uh, and with my discount and then of course the taxes that they had to charge, uh, came out to <clears throat> just, shy, just, just shy of 78 bucks. So I had gotten a 10% discount. So thank you very much. Um, so they arrived and um, I told them that since I had all these other reviews I had to do and all these other things already scheduled, I would review it as soon as I could. So um, this is actually the review for what, Monday the 16th. Um, this, this is the one I, I re, this is Thursday's review, but since it's vermouth, I'm recording it last because I don't want my palate blown out. Um, so it was going to be the last thing I record, but it's the first episode after, you know, uh, my William Chris thing. But, uh, so I hope it was good because <laughs> I'm going to record like eight other, I'm going to record like eight episodes and I'm going to do the vermouth last. So, um, so let's get into this wine here. Uh, what is it? So, um, it says empathy for the farmer, empathy for you. Gary's been on this empathy kick for a while. Um, you know, trying to, you know, let people know you should have, you should be empathetic, uh, to others, you know, don't be, don't be like a jerk or anything like that. So what, what are these wines? What is it made from? First of all, it's a white blend. So it's got a whole bunch of stuff in here. There was nowhere on the website or in the material they give you that, te that, that gives you the breakdown that I could find, or I don't remember seeing it. So I had to ask Andrew, like, what is it? So um, here's the blend. It's 27% Chenin Blanc, 23% Chardonnay, 13% Grenache Blanc, 13% Viognier, 12% Vermentino, 8% Albarino, 3% Verdeo, 1% Muscat. I'm assuming it added up to 100%. I didn't check it. We're going to check it real quick because that, that's a lot of percentages that 
that uh, I didn't verify. So um, it's a lot of different grapes in there. So, and, and these, these are not necessarily uh, grapes that are always, um, it adds up to 100%. Uh, these are not grapes that are necessarily combined, not all together. Some, some grapes are, you know, are combined with others, but not all of these. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different grapes. I like that number eight. So um, they give you some little cards here. Um, I did not do this one. There's a, Q, there's a QR code on the back. Uh, and this is, uh, sorry, 2018. It's a 2018 uh, on this. Um, and it's just a California. Um, I mean, Empathy's from Napa, but it's just a California white wine, so they can get the grapes from anywhere. There's a QR code on the back. Um, I didn't, I didn't uh, scan it to see what's going on, but there was something about um, the digital card game, so I'll let you guys figure that out. Uh, the tasting notes, it has things, smells like this, tastes like this. That's kind of cool. Um, and then the farmers, they have a couple farmers on here. So we have the Buckish Vineyards from Lodi. Um, so let's see here. It says, what is empathy in wine? It's an understanding of the hard work required to make great wine. It's hundreds of hours of hard labor in the vineyard under the hot sun, the blaring and blaring winds. We touch every cluster, manipulate every canopy to try to get perfectly ripe grapes. The blood, sweat, and tears behind the bottle are what matters. And that's Marcus Bokish. Uh, he's a winemaker. And then from Mettler family, also in Lodi, um, Adam Mettler, who's also the winemaker there, uh, just says, great fruit is required to make a great wine, plain and simple. Now, as far as who's the actual winemaker of these wines, I don't know if it's these guys like are combined, like they each make, they're each like have a hand in it. Um, let's see. Uh, then um, you have another card that, you know, it's got three people on there. One of you may recognize is Gary's picture. Um, it says, hey there, we're Empathy Wines, asking us to choose which one of our wines we love most is like asking a mother of three to name her favorite child, which I do that all the time when someone says, what's your favorite wine? I'm like, well, they're always, they're all my favorites. Uh, we love all of our kids the same, right, mom? Uh, we're not saying our 2018 white wine is our favorite, but we're not, not saying that either, wink. Um, and then let's see, so they kind of go through some tasting notes. I'm not going to, I'm kind of, kind of skip that. Um, finding this quality and character together is rare and often twice the price, but with the help of our farmers, we've struck the perfect balance. We truly made our white wine with everyone in mind. That's why the only pairings we recommend are your friends and family. So get together, uh, share a bottle and tell us what you think. And it's Gary, Nate, and John. Unfortunately, I don't know who Nate and John are. I, I guess if I looked at the website real quick, it would it would say it. Maybe I'll put a lower third. Um, but uh, so you get some cool stuff, and um, let's let's hop into the wine. Now they they mentioned something like you know wine would be twice the price. Maybe I mean we're talking basically a twenty seven twenty eight dollar bottle of just California white blend. Um, so. I'm not saying there aren't just California appellated wines that are in that 30-ish dollar price point, but typically wines that are just California appellation are not um, expensive. Because I mean, this is not a cheap bottle of wine by any means. I mean, it's it's uh, ooh, it's very aromatic. Um, nor is it cheap. All right, it's not like a $10 bottle of wine. So. There's definitely some uh, some good quality grapes that are going into this. All right, so let's uh, let's check it out. Very highly aromatic. Um, it is definitely a mishmash of things, but in many ways, I think the Chenin and the Viognier are kind of shining through a little bit. Um, it really is kind of a I don't know like a. a, a an amalgamation of everything. And I'm not gonna say I can smell the 1% Muscat in there or the 3% Verdejo because um, I, can I identify Verdejo on its own? No, but I can see, you know, elements of Chenin, Chardonnay, Viognier for sure. Maybe the Vermentino, Albarino, Grenache Blanc. Okay, maybe 
I could be like, oh, that's probably that great. But then again, some of these aromas and most likely the flavors aren't unique to some of these grapes. But I, I get mostly tree fruit out of this. Mostly, mostly peaches, apricots, but I also get a little citrus as far as orange, not like lemon lime citrus, but I'm, I'm looking at the wrong camera. Um, I'm so used to looking at the Canon and the, uh, the Osmo Pocket is basically invisible to me because the light is like right over it. Um, anyway, so the uh, uh, mostly orange, uh, orange as far as the citrus, but a lot of tree fruit. So you have apricot, apricot, however you want to pronounce it, uh, peaches, some floral to this. Floral has always been something I struggle with, but it's really apparent. That's where I'm kind of seeing the Viognier's coming from that. A little bit of, I want to say honeyed character, but kind of a candied. No overt like new oak. But I wouldn't be surprised if, if some of these wines sat in some oak for a little bit, maybe used oak or, you know, like a one first one use or second use oak. But I'm not getting like tons of um, uh, vanilla and clove and things like that. I'm trying not to swirl my wines as much as I used to, like because I would just sit here and just swirl while I talk. Because a lot of times when you swirl, like especially with white wines, some of those delicate esters are just, they just disappear on you. But yeah, I mean, it smells really nice. All right, let's just get into the wine. So it is super tasty. Um, it's not sweet, but the fruit is really... Uh, really, you know, f uh, forward. It's it's front and center. That's 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 the phrase I'm looking for. It's really front and center. The uh, apricot and the peach and the orange, especially, almost candied, but not quite. Those are really the dominant flavors on that. Acidity is really nice. So these grapes is definitely a mixture of higher acid grapes and lower acid grapes. So the Chenin Blanc Chardonnay can be high acid or at least medium plus acid. Um, the Albarino and Vermentino, they all can be really higher acids. The Grenache Blanc can be, but it's not necessarily a high, high acid grape. Viognier is usually not high acid. Um, Muscat's usually not high acid. Verdejo, I actually don't know. Uh, since I don't do a lot of single variety Verdejo, nor am I really in, in blind tasting trying to identify it. So it's not necessarily something on my, on my radar where I know it's a high acid, medium acid, low acid grape. Um, but there's definitely some freshness, some vibrancy to the wine. Um, it leads me to believe that while on the nose I said there's a possibility of some first or second use or just used oak. On the palate, I'm pretty sure there isn't really any oak. Uh, if there is, it's very minimal. I don't really get any oxidation, oxidative qualities that it sat in the oak for any length of time. I mean, it is an 18. Uh, if anything, if it had any type of oxidative quality to it, but it's not oak, it could be concrete. Uh, so it could have sat in a concrete vat or concrete egg. Um, I'm not, I don't know if there's necessarily any lees stirring to it. I don't really get any, any type of, on the aroma or on, on the uh, palate as far as flavors that lead me to, that there might be lees. Uh, and it's, it's definitely a brighter, somewhat crisper wine. So as far as any like coating, like you know, it coats your mouth. So you get like a richer mouth feel from lees. I don't think it's necessarily, uh, got a lot of lees stirring. But there could be. I mean, there's, there's, there's a slight richness to it. 
but it's not like a creamy mouthfeel. It's more just a fullness of flavor more than anything else. It's a very tasty wine. Um, so Gary and uh, the team, uh, excellent job with this wine. Uh, is it worth the almost $30? I'll let you decide on that. Um, I, I'm happy to have the wine. So I meant to say at the very beginning of the episode that I'm already going to walk into this with an, a kind of an expectation to like the wine because of who it's coming from and, and the history I have with Gary uh, and following him. And not that we're like, you know, tight or anything like that. But I mean, he definitely knows who I am. Um, I mean, uh, I'll tell a quick story when he was in Austin. Uh, I think I, I may have already said the story in one of my episodes right after the Austin thing. But so I go see him in Austin. He's with Aubrey Marcus, uh, who I really didn't know who he was until that particular like thing in Austin. Aubrey's from Austin or lives in Austin. I don't know if he's actually from Austin, but he lives there. And um, at the end of the of the little thing that they're doing, um, Gary and Aubrey are kind of off, standing off to the side. And this I can't remember the guy's name, but uh, he was like mostly like a spoken artist, you know, spoken word guy. Whatever he said was really good. I don't remember exactly what it was, but he he opened it up and he ended the show with this spoken word thing. And they're kind of standing. I'm they're standing a stage left, and I'm sitting stage left, front row. Uh, I got my Vaniac T-shirt on. I got my wristbands on. Though I lent one of my wristbands to somebody, and I gave her my contact information, and I'll just leave it at that. She never returned it. North contacted me. I'm, I'm really actually upset about that. Um, but um, so the dude's done doing the spoken word. And I stand up to say hi to Gary. And these two guys are like right at the stage, like, you know, like standing right there. And he, not rudely, he just kind of, he, he sees me and he kind of like, not like rudely goes, get out of my way. But he kind of goes, nah, he points right at me. Uh, shakes my, you know, shakes my hand, says hi to me, and it's like a five second, inter, inter, you know, exchange. And I'm like, send me the wine, dude. But um, so obviously, I'm somebody that he does know, uh, somebody that he knows has been with him since almost the very beginning, and it's not just someone who's like just hanging on every word of his because he's doing something inspirational. I do listen to him. I think he says some really cool stuff. Uh, so I still, I still follow him. Still a fan of him. Um, but so with that said. My going into this is that I had an expectation to probably like it, but I also, on a critical side of things, um, want to make sure that I'm being as objective as I can. What I normally pay $27, $28 for this wine, say, in a shop, I probably would. Um, it's a good wine. It's a different wine that I'm used to drinking as far as like the, all that. It's just like... It's just like a mishmash of, of white grapes that works. You know, it's... That it's, it's kind of that dysfunctional family that they all get along, you know. You know, this this one's adopted, this one's, you know, not adopted. You know, uh, it's a mixed, like a, like a mixed family. Like, like you got brothers and sisters, maybe like four or five different, somehow like, somehow there's like four or five different parents involved, but they're all like related somehow. Not, not incestuous, like, you know what I mean? But like somehow like some weird marriages happened and, and the kids that came out of it are all like brothers and sisters and they're from like all walks of life and races and creeds and parts of the world. And yet they like, when they come together, it's like a freaking party, like a good party. Like they're not fighting, you know, that that's kind of a good way to put it. So if that was the goal, cool. If it wasn't the goal, that's what I got out of the one. It's tasty. I'm looking forward to crushing this wine um, in a few days or a month or whatever. Because since it Corvin, it's pretty much gonna uh, it's gonna it's gonna um, be fine for indefinitely. All right, so um, that's gonna do it for this episode, Gary. If you watched it, hope hope you liked it. Andrew, hope you liked it. Um, and then everybody else, I hope you like hope you like it. Go and buy the wine. Uh, yes, you have to buy at least three bottles. So if it, 81 ish dollars or almost $90, um, is a bit much for you to commit to, you know, I understand, uh, it is a lot of money to commit to, but, uh, the wines are definitely good, uh, and are worth it. Um, if, if you're, if you're able to spend that much on, on the wine. 
All right, so uh, you can click the links above to friend me up on the website. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you're uh, watching me on YouTube. Click click the little thumbs up button. Leave comments whether on the website, uh, podcast, iTunes, the um, YouTube, whatever. I'm going to Oregon. Remember that. You want to send me a few ducats to help me offset the cost of going there. That would be outstanding. And um, we will see everyone again next time.